Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be checking out the magic from JJ Maker. The printer came pretty well packaged. It had enough foam and it was properly protected, I think, um, for the way the shipping carriers work, throwing things around and whatnot. So the printer did arrive in good shape. When I was opening the package, uh, right away opening and grabbing each component, I noticed right away that the printer did not feel cheap. Mainly the materials have a, uh, they seem to be of good quality. So in, in the package itself, pulling out all the items, there was these small items like the filament detectors and small components that needed to be properly uh, cared for the shipping and everything seems to be pretty wrapped inside. Uh, not just the printer itself, but even the small components so they can arrive uh, properly because obviously these small components are electro electronic components, so they're pretty fragile. So when I was ready to assemble the printer and uh, the guide that they provide, there's a small guide. Since this is a printer that you have to build yourself, the guide might seem a little bit more complicated than other 3D printers, which they're just about two screws, four screws, and you're ready to go. Um, in this case, the guide tells you uh, all the parts that are included. However, one of the things that I did not like was if it mentions a screw or if it mentions a, co a component of the printer, it does not say how many or the quantities for each uh, component. So that may be, um, make it a little bit more difficult if you know, you're not used to assembling printers. So putting together the printer took about 40 minutes to an hour, I would say. And that's basically because I, again, there was no quantities and I was, I was taking my time, to be honest. Uh, I put on some music and I, was, I started to put out the parts and through the guide, again, since I think that it wasn't 100% clear, I felt that I wanted to take my time and I wanted to build this the right way. So when I was ready to start the print, I came to realize something that I completely, I was so excited that I did not realize that the printer almost comes with no filament. It comes with this small roll that practically you can't do anything with it. So that's another point that I want to stand out to the guys at JG Maker. You guys have to put a little bit more filament inside the, the box with the printer itself. So the printer was assembled and I was ready to start printing. So but there was a little problem. I had only some very old filament. I had, a I had purchased a batch of some old and nasty filament that was pretty much messing up all my prints. And that's all I had laying around for the moment. So I decided to test with that. I wanted to know how the printer was going to react with the nasty filament and how it was going to work. I didn't use this filament in the past because my previous printers uh, they were giving me a lot of issues. Uh, the filament was not sticking to the bed and it was breaking throughout the process. So it was just a bad filament. But being the only thing I had, uh, I had to use it and it was my only option. So I had to start printing with that. The results were not bad at all. I would say um, when the print finished, the first Benchy that I made, I was pretty impressed how the filament was um, acting. Um, although it was a nasty print, I won't deny this to me, knowing that this was a really bad filament and how this came out, I knew that the printer was going to work pretty good because it knew what to do with this type of filament or at least it had some good settings uh, already. So a couple of days after I received the box of filament and I changed it, this was a better filament and the results were much better right away. However, on the second bench, you can still see that the, the print itself is not the greatest. In the back of the bench, the little letters completely disappear. You, you're not able to see anything. So changing the filament from the second bench to the first bench, there was a drastic change right there just with the filament. But there was no changes in the printer itself that I had done. It was time for me to inspect the printer a little more and see if there was anything that I can do to um, get better results. So I checked my levels on my bed again and the levels were fine. And that's when I realized that 
the belt for my C-axis, which is the belt that you have to assemble, it was kind of loose. The machine does have a, a tensioner for that belt on the left side. Obviously, this is pretty important because this belt is going to have, is going to help the machine stay in a precise point. So if you have any play on any of your belts, you're going to notice it. The machine is going to move a little bit more um, jaggedy, I would say. Your lines are not going to be as consistent as they could be. So what I did was I deassembled the printer at least the C-axis and the, and the X-axis one more time and I put it back together. Once putting it back together, there was a little bit more tightness on the belt. So I decided to give it one more try and I decided to print one more Benchy. And the way that Benchy was printed, I noticed the difference right away as the little letters in the back of the Benchy were a lot more visible. I was able to distinguish most of the letters unlike with the second Benchy. So that made me realize something very big and something that I had ignored, or at least I didn't realize for a while. And that is the responsibility of me as a user um, and the calibration that a 3D printer, and I'm not just talking about this one, I'm talking about 3D printers in general. The calibration requirements for a 3D printer it's one of the most crucial things. Making sure that you are doing your best, calibrating the product, stretching your belts and so on, is key and essential for you to having a good result. But that's, and I don't think that's something that manufacturers push because obviously they don't want to put the pressure on you or they don't want to say it's a bad print because it's your fault. But I do realize that a lot of bad prints that I've had in the past were because they were my fault. Regardless of how this printer has a one motor on the C axis, it still gave me an amazing result compared to other printers or prints that I've had in the past. And that is because of the responsibility that I realized that I had to put on myself while tightening up the print itself. Meaning that while I was leveling the printer, I had to put the C-axis up and down, making sure that it was moving smooth. Things that I didn't do before because the first printer was so annoying to build and the other printers that I've used were so easy to assemble and they were almost pre-assembled that the calibration was really good. So that's another thing that I can stress out for those first users. If you do get bad prints, a lot of it is gonna be on you. You have to take the responsibility, uh, join Facebook groups, ask people around, ask them how you can get better results, post pictures of your items, and ask around what can you do to better the results of your printer. So I decided to uh, print out a few new things to run a few more tests. And one of the tests was I wanted to print something with um, a larger print time, something over 10 hours. And I found this online with which is a headphone hanger, which I will be putting here in my studio. I'm still setting up my studio, so I was waiting to find a good uh, headphone hanger, and I found two. I had this one in the past. It's a pretty basic one, and this one is the face of a duck. I did make a little remix of it. I took out the eyes, but I will be putting this in my studio here. Of course, I'm going to paint it, but I was... Um, I set up the print so it would take, I think it took about 13 hours. It's about a 20% infill, and I think it's a two, per, uh, two millimeter wall. So comparing the surface of this print with the uh, first prints, there is a massive, huge difference right away. And to be honest, at that point, I, I don't want to calibrate the printer anymore because this, uh, these two prints allowed me to realize what kind of prints I actually want to run on this, which uh, to me, it's these kind of prints. After that, I decided to run two more prints on some of the smaller pieces that I've made with uh, the most detailed or complicated parts that I've printed in the past, at least with FDM. And because of the, the type of the nails, you can see how much detail is sustaining. It was able to keep the nails um, even pretty, pretty detailed. Pretty the the arch of the nail is pretty well sustained, and 
to be such a small print with a lot of in-betweens and so on, there wasn't a lot of stringing. There is some almost no noticeable. You can probably see it from here. And another print was this Venom head from another Venom models that I've made. And this model was actually made like this, split in half so I can print with the teeth facing up because at the time when I made this model, I only had one uh, FDM printer and that printer wasn't able to print this. However, this printer um, what did a great job trying to maintain these probably less than one millimeter uh, teeth. It, it's not perfect. Obviously, if I wanted to print something like this, the settings should have been different. Probably different temperatures, probably different speeds, probably different retraction uh, amounts. So these final prints help me realize what kind of printer this is and what kind of prints I'm actually gonna wanna be working with. So if you're, you know, if you wanna make small products like this, I would definitely say stick with resin printing. You would probably get better results. I am very happy with the results of this printer. I gotta say, based on how the printer only has one motor on the C-axis, I didn't think it was gonna be printing this good. I have to be honest. I think that the prints were gonna be like this. For me, I there's a couple, I could probably be printing a lot more stuff and telling you how they're gonna be printing, but in reality, I am not gonna be printing any more details, uh, any more detailed parts with this type of printer. If I wanted to print this, I would go with resin again. But if I wanted to make something as simple as this headphone holder, or another Benchy, I would definitely print it with something like this because there's not a lot of detail involved. And the printer, you can see that is handling these type of prints very good. So one of the things that this printer has solved for me, in the past, I've had a lot of issues with uh, the prints sticking to the bed. I had to apply a lot of different things to it. And in this case, the texture on this build plate, um, I, I, got, I have to be honest, on the first time I tested a print, the first Benchy, I applied some hairspray to the build plate, but that was the only time after that I did not apply any more hairspray. However, I do think that part of that is because of the texture that the bed has. So it's so good that if you, it's gonna be kind of hard for you to remove the print when it's uh, hot, with the, when the base, even if you remove it, it's gonna be hot for a while. You're probably gonna wanna let it cool down and at that point you just fold it and the print comes off really easy. To me that's something that I've had issues with in the past. Another thing is that layer shifting. I do not, I did not notice um, any layer shifting in all these eight prints. Of course there is some inconsistencies here and there but that is, um, again, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting perfect prints off of this. Out of one calibration, it's not that bad. Another thing that this printer takes took care of for me in the past was getting a printer and starting to print. With this printer was pretty much easy. So a couple of things that I liked about the printer are, again, that the printer does not feel cheap. Um, the materials seem to be pretty good uh, materials. I think they're gonna last. Another thing that I really liked about this printer was this white um, cover on the top. So that little plate on the top stands out in comparison to other printers. I think that's a really nice feature, although it's not necessarily, and although you don't need it for anything, it makes it look cool. Another great thing that I noticed on this, and that's, again, going back to the same thing, which it doesn't feel cheap. After eight different prints, there was no need for the printer to be leveled again. And that's because, again, based on how it feels, these bottom parts, these bottom screws for the bed feel pretty tight, they feel pretty well. So they don't seem like they're going to, they're loose or they're going to be moved. Of course with the vibration they might move a little bit and that's what I'm used to. In the past I used to have to maybe level my beds every print. Uh, but we'll see what time maybe that changes. But again, based on how I feel, it doesn't feel loose compared to other printers that I've used to make it easy and it's not too hard either. I think it has the right amount of uh, pressure for it to last, again, eight prints, no leveling, that's great to me. And then, so now I do have to point out a couple of things that I did not like or that I would like to change on this printer. So the number one would be the guide. Um, I would like 
the guide to be a little bit more user friendly. And this is me thinking about user that this is me thinking about a user that has never built a printer before. Um, you might, if you're not familiar with how the materials are for and or how they work and so on, if you're not familiar with the components and everything, you might have a little more of a hard time building it. So to the guys at JG Maker, there, I think that there might be a way for you guys to help the user in that way. Or you can even go base it on the steps. Like, like this is step A and everything is uh, stamped with a step A, step A. Um, the, the screws that you're gonna need for step A, they all are bundled together. Something like that I think would be very, very helpful for those users, again, that have never printed, uh, that have never built a printer before. Or at least I think there's some room for the guys at JG Maker to actually help or make the process easier for those type of individuals. Another thing that I would definitely change, again, I can't stress this out, you guys need to add a little bit more of filament inside of the package so the users can start printing right away. Another thing that I think that I would change, um, which is something, it's one of the specs on this machine, which is the filament is on the right side, right? Uh, to me, that takes a lot uh, more space. So if I wanted to have another printer next to this one, I think that it would be best to have uh, the roll on top. I think that it would be a good idea, but I definitely want to test it out like this. This is the first um, printer that the filament is on the side. I probably would change it in the future, depending on how I see that uh, the filament works. If I want to you know, compress the space of the printer, then I probably move it to the top. I think it would be good to have some sort of system so the user can use something and actually stretch out the belt as much as they can. Obviously, this, uh, the bottom belt is already pre-installed, but this one, since it does need a little bit of tension, I think it would be good to add a system that would help you with that. The printer, of course, it does come with that space for improvements like the C-axis. You can probably put the roll, fil the filament on the top again, like most of the printers, so you can confine that space. To me, I like it as it is. I will test the printer, uh, the filament on the right side and see how that goes. And it's working pretty good to me, and I'm gonna leave it as it is. Another thing that I noticed is the printer comes at a competitive price. Um, I was checking out an Amazon, comparing this printer with other ones, some other even pre-built ones. But comparing the printer to other ones, the printer seems to be on a pretty good competitive price um, for the features that it has and for the results that I'm getting. So if you're thinking about purchasing this printer, if this is gonna be your first printer and you don't like to fix things, you don't like to work on it, and if you just expect it to print perfect out of the box, this may not be the printer for you. But if you're looking to buy a printer, you don't have a clue how printers are working or you're just looking to build your first project, based on how it's only halfway built, I think this is a great project to start with for those uh, that want to build something but they don't want to get too complicated like building the entire thing from scratch. I think it's a good project for again for those that like to have fun in building things. Again I can't stress out the responsibility that you myself as users we have for the printer to get good calibration so we can get good prints. Uh, so I'll leave you with that I hope and I hope I was able to answer some of the questions that you guys have for this printer or for some of the first users. So this is the magic from JG Maker. I will continue to use this printer and I think I have an idea of what kind of stuff I'm gonna print next. So I'll see you guys next time.